learn a little bit more about them. Ralson Ara is the National Midwifery Officer at UNFPA Bangladesh, where she plays a pivotal role in advancing midwifery as an independent profession in collaboration with the government of Bangladesh. She has 20 years of experience in nursing and midwifery as a clinical practitioner and faculty in both the private and the public sector. Her academic journey includes graduation in nursing from Dhaka University with a Master of Science in Nursing with a focus on child health and a Master's in Public Health from Bangabandhu Sek Mujib Medical University. And next is Joy, who is a midwife from the United Kingdom and is currently serving as an international midwifery specialist with the United Nations in Bangladesh, a climate vulnerable country where professional midwives have recently been introduced. From 2013 to 23, she was a global professional advisor for the Royal College of Midwives and has an academic career as a senior lecturer, program director, and researcher, as well as a clinical midwife. Wow, a lot of energy there. Joy's humanitarian work spans over three decades, focusing on maternal and newborn health services for vulnerable populations in challenging and fragile settings worldwide. And we also have with us Nabila Hussein Perno, Perno, who is a public health professional specializing in sexual and reproductive health and epidemiology. She finished her undergraduate degree in global health and cell and molecular biology and her master's of public health in epidemiology. Following this, she worked briefly with the Public Health Agency of Canada, interned at the WHO headquarters in the Non-Communicable Diseases Unit, UNDP Bangladesh, and then UNFPA Bangladesh office in 2017. In this role, she has worked with the UNFPA team in the establishment of midwifery programs in rural Bangladesh health facilities, providing a range of sexual and reproductive health services. She also supported the service delivery for a Rohingya population in camps following the 2017 protracted um, crisis. Uh, she's been influential in cervical cancer screening, pre-treatment um, cancer treatment centers. She worked during COVID, during an international interagency team on COVID-19 response. Um, and she leads the climate change and sexual and reproductive health portfolio um, as part of her work. Amazing women, and I know you're looking forward to hearing um, their presentation. Over to you, Joy. Okay, thank you so much. And Roshan, if I could ask you now to share your screen so that we can... <clears throat> see our slides. And if you just put them onto slideshow, that would be great. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Can I just check that everyone is able to hear me okay? Oh, I certainly can. Okay, that's perfect. Right, well, um, Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, as it is here in Bangladesh, to all our participants around the world from different countries. And from Bangladesh, we wish you a very happy International Day of the Midwife. Uh, as has already been said, my name is Joy Kemp, and I am an international midwife specialist here in Bangladesh with UNFPA the United Nations Sexual and Reproductive Health Agency. And I'm delighted to be presenting alongside my national colleagues this evening, Roshan and Nabila. 
about one of the ways in which UNFPA has been working alongside the government of Bangladesh to strengthen midwifery, and that is mainstreaming climate change and its impact on sexual and reproductive health and rights into midwifery education and services. So Roshan is our National Midwifery Officer with UNFPA and sits within the offices of one of our government partners, the Directorate General of Nursing and Midwifery at the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare here in Bangladesh. So she's uniquely placed in the corridors of power to support and influence our government partners. And Nabila is our Programme Analyst for Maternal Health she, as well as leading our work on cervical cancer, is our national expert on climate change and its impact on health, specifically sexual and reproductive health and rights. Next slide, please. Can you move on to the next slide, please, Roshan? Thank you. So, um, we just wanted before we, we begin our presentation to share a flavor of how we celebrated International Day of the Midwife here in Bangladesh today, where pink is the color for midwives. It was chosen by the prime minister. It's a special color for her. And you'll notice that we are all wearing varieties of pink for this presentation. So we were a sea of pink. Uh, this morning in uh, in Dhaka. We had a high level event with many important policy makers and similar events were held across the country despite the heat wave that we're currently experiencing which made the celebrations challenging with temperatures of up to 40 degrees centigrade. Next slide please. Thank you. So our presentation today will firstly explain the context of Bangladesh and why this year's theme of midwives as a vital climate solution is so pertinent for us here. We'll explain the climate changes that we're facing and how these are impacting sexual and reproductive health and rights. And we'll try to help you to understand the structures that we have here in Bangladesh to support midwifery nationally and what UNFPA is doing within those structures with the government of Bangladesh to strengthen midwives and position them as frontline responders to climate change. And finally, we have some recommendations for you to consider if our presentation sparks any, idea, uh, any ideas in your mind. So without further ado, I'm now going to hand over to my colleague uh, Nabila, uh, to take us through the background here in Bangladesh. Thank you. Thank you, Joy, uh, for the introduction. Um, so again, a very good afternoon, evening to everybody gathered around here. Um, Roshan, next slide, please. Okay, so as you can all tell that the topic of our presentation today is how we integrated climate change into midwifery education. Um, and to be able to understand the importance of that work, we wanted to give you a little bit of background on Bangladesh. So it's a small country, it's a relatively new country, came into formation in 1971. It's very densely populated, uh, you know, the eighth most densely populated country in the world, a very small, uh, you know, country with 170 million people. It has a warm monsoon climate with, uh, you know, a lot of rain, cyclones, and the winter is typically very short in duration. Um, Bangladesh is also the seventh most climate vulnerable country in the world and the first, you know, the most vulnerable. Asia. And as you can see in the map, in the picture, there are eight major divisions in different colors. And I'll come to it later, but each region has its own like specific climate hazard that it faces. A little bit on the SRHR status and indicators in the country. So the maternal mortality ratio in Bangladesh right now is 136 per 100,000 life births. And from the 1980s, it has reduced significantly. We were somewhere around 300. So uh, 
you know, over the past couple of decades, there has been a lot of work and most of the low hanging fruits have been you know, picked already in this matter. Um, the, the fertility rate is 2.17 right now. It was also very high, but it has also come down. The contraceptive prevalence rate is, as you can see, 62%. And we put in the violence against women indicator here because it's a very important aspect, both in terms of the SRHR component and also what climate change does. So in Bangladesh, in a survey that was conducted in 2015, the Violence Against uh, Women National Survey, 75% uh, of ever married women reported having faced domestic violence in the past two years. Um, so I think that's very telling of the, of the underlying social determinants of health and gender equity. Uh, in terms of institutional delivery, we have about 67% institutional delivery in rural areas and about 77% in urban areas. But this is a note that this is an average and there are places specifically geographically remote climate vulnerable locations which has very low institutional. So those are the pockets that we're really concerned about. Um, next slide, please. So this is just to put things in context that, uh, you know, Bangladesh faces a lot of different climate hazards, but there is a UN estimate which states that by 2050, almost 17% of the country will be submerged by rising sea level, uh, which means that about 20 million people will be internally displaced. And for a country which has weak infrastructure, both in terms of roads and like, you know, uh, infrastructure of the urban, urban settings, rural settings, but also in terms of health infrastructures. This is a huge challenge. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, there are many different types of climate hazards that the country faces. There are slow onset, you know, issues like, uh, you know, um, sorry. So slow onset issues like increasing groundwater salinity, uh, sea level rise, uh, and all of those things. And then we have very drastic issues, for example, the short term, uh, not the like the acute events like natural disasters, droughts and all of that. So Bangladesh really faces a gamut of problems related to climate change and environment in general. Next slide, uh, next slide please. So in which almost every country had to prepare as part of the, uh, you know, as part of their um, nationally determined contributions. In line with the Paris Agreement, it had to list out kinds of adaptations that each country is going to undertake. And Bangladesh in its SNAP identified 11 climate stress areas. And Uh, you can, and also the different trips are indicated. So we have pockets, we have districts which are very prone to flooding, you know, which will almost annually have flood. flooding. We have districts which will have flash flood, not really have like a proper early warning system, if, you know, uh, and uh, it just happens like uh, out of the season. We also have a lot of Cyclones because can I suggest that everybody cut turn off their videos? I think we're having a bit of a connection problem. You know, using the water and the subsequent health outcomes. Next slide, please. Um, sorry. Sorry, is my sound okay? Okay, no, it's been coming and to... going, coming and going a bit, but continue for now, please, Nabila. But okay. turn off your Great. video. Turn yeah. off your video. Yeah. Okay. So, in terms of how climate, this is a framework which has been borrowed from WHO. It uh, shows the different climate sensitive health risks. And uh, you know, it shows the different vulnerability factors. 
And you, you can clearly see here that the way climate change impacts health, there are multiple pathways, but uh, you know, natural disasters, extreme weather events, heat waves, respiratory diseases, waterborne diseases, zoonoses, uh, vector-borne diseases, malnutrition, non-communicable diseases, mental health, are, are all of these factors you know, are somehow associated with sexual reproductive health and how women and girls and how you know, people in the community are impacted. And then there is the role of the midwife for addressing these. At the same time, you can also see uh, on the right-hand side how climate change and natural, disaster, na natural disasters impact the health infrastructure, which can be buildings, which can be, you know, healthcare facilities, the ability of healthcare providers to provide services, disruptions in supply chain. So all of these things are really intertwined together. And of course, we have upstream uh, social determinants of health that impacts the community. Next slide, please. I'm not going to read out the definition for SRHR, but you know, as we all know, it's uh, you know, it's about being able to realize uh, all of our functions uh, for reproduction and for everything to do with our sexuality and how we are able to practice our rights. Next slide, please. What's more important are the different components of SRHR right now. Uh, and uh, again, I'm not going to go into the details of this, but then uh, based on the Guttmacher Lancet Commission, these were the defined areas of SRHR. And of this, I would like to mention that current research is most heavily focused on maternal newborn health and gender-based violence. So we have evidence most specifically for these two on how climate change is really impacting. There are research and evidence for the others, but most of the research is based on this too right now. Um, so that is an issue. We also can see that SRHR, there are some groups, SRHR needs are universal, but there are some groups which are more vulnerable and which need to be prioritized when we think about SRHR services. And of this, we have adolescents, we have people who are displaced, people with disabilities, and then ethnic and racial minorities and indigenous people. And in the context of Bangladesh, these are the groups which are usually living or residing in the most remote regions. Um, next slide, please. So again, uh, this is uh, based on what we have identified through our work. There is uh, currently enough evidence to state that extreme hot temperatures, heat waves, air pollutions have uh, different uh, you know, impacts on pregnancy and the child, their you know, preterm birth, lower birth weight, and a lot of other issues. There is some evidence about salinity, uh, you know, groundwater salinity exposure and risk of hypertension, preeclampsia, eclampsia. Uh, there is a lot of evidence on how food insecurity is going to impact maternal health uh, by, you know, causing malnutrition. Uh, of course, children are going to be impacted. Sanitation issues are huge in the context of Bangladesh, specifically these rural areas, which which, you know, have very poor sanitation services to begin with. Like, you know, most of these groups that we are talking about do not have proper sanitation facilities. And when they're displaced or they're facing uh, floods or they're displaced temporarily in shelters because of cyclones, it is a problem for them. And on the flip, flip side, and also how, for example, in areas with high water salinity, groundwater salinity, we are seeing uh, these populations, these women and girls facing problems, maintaining their menstrual health and hygiene. So that's another issue. So wash is very important here. Um, and of course, the underlying disproportionate impact on women and girls. So the groups that we are talking about are like beneficiaries, people in the community. They're already dealing with a lot of a lot of health inequities and that are centered around their gender. So they're like I talked about violence against uh, you know women rates. The rates for that are very high. There's a lot of child marriages. Like I think Bangladesh is, if not the most, then one of the most uh, uh, you know risky countries for child marriage rates. Um, there is a lot of underlying 
impacts because of this gender inequity about how women access care and how they have how they express their needs and rights. So all of these are combined together. Next slide, please. So this is where midwives come in and this is where midwives are so very important because in Bangladesh, midwives are the, can be the first point of contact for many of this rural women. Uh, we have had women who have never interacted with a healthcare provider and then they're you know, able to go to a midwife and over the years since midwives have been introduced you know, with the symbol of pink uniform uh, in villages, slowly the trust that women in the community have started to put you know, on these midwives is, is very critical. So it's important because the role midwives play not only in terms of sexual reproductive health services that they're providing, not only about the maternal health services that they're providing, but also their ongoing education. Like if a midwife says it's important for you to put up mosquito nets to protect yourself from mosquitoes, the woman is more likely to listen to that. If the, if the midwife informs them or advises them about certain specific adaptation related behaviors, it's more likely that the women will respond. At the same time, like I mentioned in this geographic po pockets, which are so remote that people and women don't come even for deliveries to the facilities, having a trusted midwife in the community plays a big role in, you know, giving confidence to this women that, you know, they can make that very are you know difficult journey because they will be seen by somebody who they respect and who's going to take care of them. Uh, so in many different ways, midwives play a very pivotal role in our fight against climate change, especially for women and girls, especially for the most disadvantageous population groups. With this, I'll hand over to Roshan to give more context about our intervention. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Navida. Am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Okay, yes. thank you. Okay. Very easy um, to hear. As we are talking about the nurses and midwives, first I would like to introduce with you the administrative and regulatory body of nurses and midwives in Bangladesh. DGNM, this is the Director General of Nursing at Midwifery, the highest body. Under the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, it's public of organizations overseeing the recruitment, transfer, disciplinary actions, etc. And DGNM uh, is closely working with the DNMC, Bangladesh Nursing and Midwifery Council. The DNMC is a regulatory body responsible for the pre service education, practice, accreditation, quality assurance, licensing, re licensing curriculum development and special offering the specialization training. And they, both of them are working with the nurses and midwifery schools and clinical sites as well. So they are, under them, nurses and midwives are working in across the country. Nurses still working in the primary level to tertiary level, but midwife has shorted and shortage and new professions in Bangladesh only 10 years history in Bangladesh so, uh, and they are working till now sub-districts level, union level and Okujela health complex. So midwives open offering the uh, crucial role and first point of contact for the women, especially for the SRHR, um, maternal, maternal and newborn care. They uh, orient or educate the women about the birth preparedness, disaster preparedness, and the general protecting their health and uh, known environment related to climate change and impacts on, uh, on climate change. It is essential to uh, integrate nurses and midwives into the effort to address the climate change and health focusing the sexual reproductive health and rights. Effort should aim to enhance the knowledge and skills of the mediums as primary care provider and enabling them significantly contribute to the climate resilience healthcare systems. You see there is a three different there are three different tables here. First one uh, uh, mentions the, um, the total workforce under under the uh, DGNM and BNMC. 
PNMC uh, Bangladesh. The total registered nurse almost 88,000. Uh, they are working in the public, private, NGO, and NIG, NI, NIGO, and total 8,000 uh, MEDEFs, registered MEDEFs. They are also working in the private and public hospitals. Among them, uh, 4, uh, 4, 44,000 MEDEFs are deployed in the uh, public facilities, health facilities, and only 2,500 MEDEFs are working at the sub districts level. These are the informations uh, right side and above. These are the informations of the midwifery schools or uh, educations. Bangladesh offering two, currently two uh, educations program. One diploma in midwifery, it is three years course and uh, total 170 institutions uh, on way, 62 uh, public and 18 um, autonomous and private organizations. And midwifery, midwifery graduation so start in 2022 with nine institutions, four in public sectors and five in the private sectors. And um, MSc in Media will, uh, start, will be started in 2024, preparation is ongoing. And another course is Diploma in Media Nursing, Nursing in Diploma in Media Nursing in Graduations, Basic and Post Basics and MSc is uh, in country MSc is ongoing. The, these are the these are the courses. So, um, you what uh, UNFP did in the context of climate change and SRHS to include in their existing curriculum or to empower or educate to the healthcare professionals. They have provided uh, technical support to formulate the policy and national guideline on sexually reproductive health and rights in the context of climate change. They conducted capacity building programs for the healthcare providers, including doctors, nurses, midwives, family welfare visitors, community health workers, to equip them with the necessary skills and knowledge, implement community interventions in flat, prone, cyclone prone, prone districts with the implementing partners. They develop emergency preparedness response, including the minimum essential service package for efficient response during the crisis. They have collaborated with the Dhaka University to develop the module on climate change and health, and all already started to offer the three month certificate course for the national uh, stakeholders, including the UNFPA staff to enhance their understanding of the intersection between the climate change and health. What UNFP did with the uh, focusing on midwifery, they have conducted followed a review of the existing training manual on climate change and public health, or, and also reviewed research in nursing and midwifery curricula, including the diploma, BSc, and uh, master's level curriculum. They visited the uh, policy level uh, people administrative body, regulatory body, conducted the focus group discussions and did the uh, key informant interviews with the relevant officials. There are some uh, there are some pictures of the interview sessions and this is the our uh, car car existing curriculum for the nurses and midwives. So beside this, they have conducted a three days uh, training program for the trainer and it was organized by the UNFP with the support of donors for the uh, 20 media and uh, nursing faculty from the public and private sectors uh, received this training uh, to ensuring the cascading knowledge and sustainability of the initiatives. A day-long orientations provided for 550 media students usually third year and final year students to foster the awareness and understanding of the climate change impact on the health. And orientation provided to the district public health nurse to serve as a mentor and supervisor for the media to enhance support to the grassroots levels. Media working at the remote or rural heart rate area, heart to reach area health facilities undergo specialized training focusing on the sustainable practice to private age-related health challenges. So, 
Can you come a little bit further towards the computer? We can't really hear you at the moment. Roshan, we can't hear you. Are you there? Okay, so I'll just jump in because this is, uh, I'm going to do the last few slides anyway. So as, uh, can you, you can hear me fine? Yes, yes Troy. Okay, fine. Yes, so Jen. this was um, just when we did the mapping of the existing contents on climate change in the mid midwifery curricula, you can see that there was some existing content, but nothing specifically about um, really positioning midwives as frontline service providers um, in climate change. So we are um, adapting that content and, and that's what's been rolled out. So uh, I'm not gonna go through because we're a bit short on time, what we found, but uh, we, we, it's a question of upgrading the curricula at all levels. So next slide, please. Roshan, are you able to uh, change the slide for us? I think, uh, oh. okay, she should be able to. think maybe her slides are stuck. But uh, Roshan, we're, we're not able to hear you. Can you either stop sharing your screen and we can ask the organizers to put uh, the other slides up or? Okay, are we able to manually come out of Roshan Sorry. sharing? I'm here and I'm listening you all. Oh, okay. We can we can hear you now. We couldn't hear you before. Yeah, yeah. I'm so busy. just okay. So is there anything else you want to say about this slide before we move on? Okay. We're not hearing you, Roshan. Can you move on to the next slide, please? The slide is, oh, okay. So if you can just, if you can share the slides with us again, maybe Roshan or? Or shall I? Yes, maybe that would be best. Now is okay, Joy. Okay, yes, that's fine. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, thank you. So just to round up, um, We've explained the background to our situation here in Bangladesh and the challenges that we're facing with the impact of climate change on health and sexual and reproductive uh, health and rights, and some of the steps that we've taken to mainstream a greater understanding of those issues here with our local policymakers, health service managers, educators, health professionals, and most importantly, the midwives themselves. We're aware that for many of our audience today, this may be new information that as yet, you may not be seeing the impact of climate change so dramatically in your own countries. So we hope that our experience will encourage you to get ahead and to start thinking about these issues now and to change the dialogue about climate change in your own countries to include not only midwives and health workers' responsibility to limit harm to the environment through their practice, but also to understand the, in, the impact that climate change is already having on health and how midwives can be frontline responders to ensure that women and adolescents can achieve their sexual and reproductive health and rights. So based on our experience, we recommend that you integrate climate change content into your nursing and, and midwifery curricula at all levels. Think about innovative ways um, to 
enhance the practical application of that knowledge, for example, through hands-on sessions and scenario-based studies, and be active in advocating, helping policymakers and others to understand the impact of climate change on SRHR, hold consultation events with them, and lastly, to contribute to the growing body of research in this area. Do at whatever level you operate, ensure that data is collected and that midwives are supportive to fulfill their very important role as a vital solution to climate change. Next slide, please, Roshan. Um, Joy, Roshan, we will have to um, wrap up. We yep. are almost to 15 minutes before the hour. So um, if we can okay. please have your summary. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thank you. So we just like to um, show our key messages and um, we'll uh, move on to the next slide, please, Roshan. Just to acknowledge our donors, the government of Sweden and the UK, uh, the huge contribution from all of our UNA, UNFPA Bangladesh colleagues and our course, our government partners here in Bangladesh. And I'd personally like to acknowledge Roshan and uh, Nabila because they've really led on this work. They have the vision for it and have driven it forward. And it's been a real honor to work alongside them. Last slide, please. Thank you. So, um, if anything has sparked an interest, we'd be very happy to have dialogue with you. This is our, this is our contact details and uh, very happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you so much for your time. And that's goodbye from us here in Bangladesh. Thank you.